Sunday, August the 14th, 2005. Cypriot airliner Helios 522 is circling above Athens. Zulu Uniform 522, this is Athens ATC. Respond, please. There are 121 people on board, including 22 children. Nobody has been able to contact the plane for over two hours. Two F-16s are scrambled to intercept the Renegade aircraft. As they approach, the fighter pilots see two people struggling inside the cockpit. Could this be a terrorist hijack? Then, dramatically, the plane veers off course and crashes at 400 miles an hour into a hillside north of Athens. Helios 522 is one of the worst air disasters in European history. It is also one of the most mysterious. This is the story of the last few hours of Flight 522, a story that has chilling implications for every air passenger today. Cyprus, Sunday the 14th of August 2005. It was the height of the Greek summer season, a time for families to travel. Lanaka Airport was packed with holidaymakers and tourists. The crew of Helios Flight 522 welcomed their passengers on board. There was a holiday mood among them as they settled in for their short flight from Cyprus to Athens. Flying the Boeing 737 were German Captain Hans-Jürgen Merton and his Cypriot co-pilot Pambus Charalambus. Flight 522 took off as scheduled shortly after 9 in the morning, heading northwest towards Athens. Three minutes after takeoff. On board Helios Flight 522, the captain reported a fault to ground control at Lanaka Airport. There was a problem with the plane's cooling system. It seemed minor, and Cyprus Air Traffic Control gave Helios 522 the go-ahead to climb to its cruising altitude of 34,000 feet. This would be the last communication between air traffic control and flight 522. At her home in Cyprus, the co-pilot's mother sat down to watch television. I usually watch my favorite show at noon on Sunday. But instead of the show, there was a news flash. By now, Helios 522 was in Greek airspace. Athens air traffic controllers had been trying for over an hour to establish contact with the aircraft. But it was to no avail. Meanwhile, the silent plane circled in a holding pattern over Athens. I was with colleagues near the Greek Pentagon when we got a call from the Ministry of Defence telling us that a Boeing plane had uh, communication problems with Athens International Airport. One question was uppermost in the minds of the Greek authorities. Did Athens face a terrorist attack like 9-11? Two fighter jets were scrambled to intercept what is officially known as a renegade plane. What the pilots reported back shocked the authorities. The passengers were wearing their oxygen masks, the co-pilot was slumped over the instruments, and persons unknown were seen struggling with the controls. It seemed that the plane had been hijacked. Could it be targeted on Athens? The authorities now faced a terrible dilemma. Should the F-16 shoot it down, sacrificing 121 innocent people? The pilots had only moments to decide. 
The Air Force had 15 seconds to decide because the plane was flying over a populated area. But the decision was made for them. As Flight 522 ran out of fuel, the engine stopped and the plane veered off course towards the mountains north of Athens. My wife called me. She said a plane had crashed in Kalamo. Then she said, it crashed in our village. News of the accident spread swiftly. And the relatives of those on board desperately sought information. I called my daughter-in-law, but she didn't answer her phone. I didn't know what else to do. I had to go to Larnaca Airport. It was chaos, absolute chaos. Nobody knew anything. Everyone was shouting. No one assisted us. At the airport, the co-pilot's mother demanded answers. They said, we don't know yet. Nobody knew. When I asked them who was the co-pilot, their reply was, apparently the captain was German. They said, I didn't ask you about any German. I asked you about Haralumbus. Tell me if he was on the flight. Amidst the chaos of the crash scene, the scale of the tragedy emerged. All 121 people on board were dead. Among them, 22 children. Helios Flight 522 was one of the worst air disasters in recent European history. Those who were there are still finding the experience very difficult to deal with. I got here as quick as I could, and I ran to see if I could save anyone. I couldn't save anyone. I put a child on my back. My clothes got soaked with blood. I didn't care, I, I just wanted to save someone. There, right there. That's where the mother and the child were. The mother was lying here and the small child was next to her, holding her hand. Right here. This terrible loss of life shocked the whole world. Distraught relatives demanded answers. Why did Flight 522 crash? Rumors and speculations about the cause of the crash erupted immediately. <laughs> Helios 522 had lost all contact with air traffic control. So the Greek Air Force had scrambled two F-16 fighters to investigate. The fighters had seen the co-pilot slumped in his seat and the captain missing. At first, it seemed Athens had faced a terrorist attack from a hijacked plane similar to 9-11. As journalist Peris Karavanopoulos recalls, Our highest government source gave us the information that it was a terrorist attack because the F-16 pilots who were flying next to the Boeing had reported seeing a man wearing a mask in the cockpit. Many Greeks suspected that the F-16s had shot down the renegade plane. But the Greek Air Force immediately declared that neither of the fighters had fired their weapons. When the Greek authorities launched their crash investigation, a far more complex story started to emerge. The first key clue came from the reports of the F-16 pilots. Soon after, a series of new details started to emerge from the observations of the two F-16 pilots. 